When it comes to NFL contracts, when it comes to salary cap, when it comes to every single loophole that is a part of that, it's a big learning process, especially as we learned over the past couple of days of that whole thing we was going through. But anyway, um, it's always something new that we're learning, that we get a new understanding of all the time. And being a Baltimore Ravens fan, we've been saying this for years, Baltimore Ravens, they teach you a lot. Um, they always show us stuff that we had no clue about. They show us these different loopholes and these different strategies when it comes to contracts and salary cap and all of that stuff. And this year it was no different because the Baltimore Ravens, they had seven guys with these special contracts where if they weren't extended or re-signed or whatnot uh, by today, 4 p.m., then their contracts were set to expire. And then the Baltimore Ravens would acquire some dead money on the cap due to the way that those contracts were set up. It was seven of those guys. Now, um, with Michael Pierce... They did reach an extension with him. And shout out to Brian McFarlane from Raven Salary Cap because he provides everybody with all this information. Y'all follow him on Twitter. It's Raven Salary Cap all together. Please follow him because he breaks it down all the time. I don't know how he knows all this stuff, but his name on Twitter, it fits his game on Twitter. He knows what he's talking about. But anyway, uh, Ravens had seven players who had these special set up contracts that were going to void today. But Michael Pierce, they signed him to a contract extension like a couple weeks ago. Uh, Nelson Aguilar, they signed him to a contract extension yesterday. And Odell Beckham Jr., they reworked his contract. So we're still going to see what happens with him, whether he gets cut or they sign him to an extension. We'll see what happens with that. I got how I feel what's going to happen, but we'll see. Anyway, um, so there were four guys left. And let's just read this report from Brian, Brian McFarlane. He said, the Ravens initially had seven players whose contracts would have voided today, totaling 23.6 mil. They reached extensions for Michael Pierce, Nelson Aguilar, and restructured Odell Beckham Jr. to remove the void years off of their contracts. So the four remaining, Kevin Zeitler, Gus Edwards, Rock Yassine, Geno Stone, they will count for 8.3 mil as dead money on the 2024 cap. And those four are now officially set to be free agents uh, at the beginning of the new league year. And when you look at those names, those are some, really three out of four of those are heavy hitters for the Baltimore Ravens, guys that like really had a big impact throughout the season. But what's the most shocking for me is that the Ravens, they did not re-sign Kevin Zyla. That's the one that really caught me off guard big time. Because I just knew I fully expected, oh, yeah. And they had talked about a contract extension before this season even started. Before this past season even started, they was talking about it. Kevin Zeitlin is camp. I know they, they, they wanted to get a contract extension done. And I thought the Baltimore Ravens, I thought this would have been something that they would have done easily. But obviously not. And now Kevin Zeitler, the, the dead money for him alone, um, I believe that Brian McFarlane let us know that it's like four Four mil and change. Yeah, here it goes. It says uh, it is 4.2 mil in dead money. That's going to be on a 2024 cap for them not re-signing or signing a, not signing Kevin Zeitler to a contract extension. And that's something that, like I said, I really didn't see coming. But we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about these other three as well. But before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't not miss a thing. Because stuff is getting busy. Like I told you, it's, it's getting busy. But... Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video. And leave a like on the video because it helps out a ton. Now, um, with Zeitler, I just I thought that would be like a no-brainer for them. Uh, I know they there was talks that Jeff Zrebic brought it up that they had been talking to Kevin Zeitler about getting it done, but they just they couldn't come to an agreement. And like I said, I'm shocked. I I, I did not see that happening. Um and with Kevin Zeitler, I know earlier today I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, man, he's been holding it down at right guard for the past two years. But no, he's been there for the past three years. I was like, whoa, time flies, man. It really does. Time goes by so fast. But now it's not official that he won't be back because – even though he hasn't been re-signed yet, even though he's set to be a free agent, even though there's going to be over four mil of uh, dead money on the cap for his contract alone, he could still possibly be re-signed by the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I think it's a very slim chance that that happens, even though it's still possible. I think it's a slim chance that that happens, reason being because it didn't happen yet. If they would have re-signed him, that dead money, that would have been way down. That would have been like way, way down, and that could have been pushed 
push back another couple years, depending on the structure of the contract. So that's why I think like it's like, all right, do we inquire dead money? Are we do we push the dead money down the road and resign him or do we take on that dead money and not resign him? You got to feel like it's the latter now. But what happens at right guard now? Um, I think Ben Cleveland could be Ben Cleveland's time for him to, to get his opportunity. And I know a lot of people were not big fans of Ben Cleveland. Uh, I know they always said that Ben Cleveland was stiff. He just couldn't move around that well. Um, but with Ben Cleveland, when he played, he did his thing. He didn't play too much last year, but when he did play, he was just fine. And I know it's a small sample size. We haven't got to see Ben Cleveland over an extended period of time. But this could be the opportunity that he's been waiting for. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, at left guard, John Simpson, he doesn't have one of those crazy co type of contracts like all of these guys, but he's said to be a free agent. So Ravens got another question mark there. So at right guard, who's it going to be? At left guard, who's it going to be? Then, like we talked about the other day, the both tackles, the right tackle, uh, Morgan Moses, left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, who knows what's going to happen with them? Like, Ravens. <laughs> Ravens like they they got some work to do. They got a lot of work to do. I I really we really wish that they could have been doing all this work coming off a of Super Bowl, but yeah, it is what it is. Um now, uh with those other guys, um because Zyla wasn't the only person whose contract expired today, uh and they're said to be a free agent. Gus Edwards, his contract expired today too. So Gus Edwards is getting ready to test the market. Ooh, that's going to be something right there. Because we as Ravens fans, I mean, Gus has been with the Baltimore Ravens since 2018. Undrafted rookie free agent. He came in with Lamar Jackson. He came in with Mark Andrews. He came in with wasn't that Orlando Brown Jr. with Hayden Hurst. With, uh, it, was a, it was a group of guys there. But um, Gus Edwards came in. Very strong draft class. Very uh, just a, the, the turning point. Of the Baltimore Ravens as we know them um, But he's been with the Baltimore Ravens his entire career So there's been throughout the years there's been a lot of discourse on Gus Edwards Like how good is he really? Are Ravens fans underrating him? Are they underappreciating him? Are Ravens fans overrating him? Do they feel like he's better than he actually is? But now depending on where he goes and depending on the opportunity And you know what even before that we getting ready to see how the NFL world feels about a Gus Edwards. Now, me personally, with Gus Edwards, I always felt like the Baltimore Ravens, they never really gave him the full chance. They never really gave him the full opportunity to be that guy for them. They never did. There were opportunities where they could have taken advantage of him. They could have done it, but they just simply, they didn't. They never let Gus cook. They never let Gus just do his thing consistently. Um, but now we'll see. Where Gus ends up if he gets that opportunity uh, Because as we know The running back market It has taken drastic hits over the past Couple of years um, So it's, it's going to be interesting To see what happens with Gus Edwards But we obviously hope that he does land on his feet Somewhere good And he goes out there and does his thing Rocky Singh uh, Rocky Singh somebody who Wasn't really a big part of the Baltimore Ravens This year no early on in the season uh, he played a lot more because that's what Marlon Humphrey was hurt. Well, Marlon Humphrey was really hurt all year. But Rocky Scene wasn't really that big of an impact with the Baltimore Ravens this year. I remember going into this season just knowing that, oh, yeah, this is going to be our number two corner opposite Marlon Humphrey. And then when Marlon Humphrey got hurt, I'm like, oh, well, I guess he might get, he might be our number one. But it just never quite worked out that way. Um, but Rocky Scene is said to be a free agent. But then last but certainly not least, somebody who I – and I knew the chances were extremely slim. Somebody who I wanted the Baltimore Ravens to really keep. And I would just have loved to see him be the Baltimore Ravens starting free safety. But I understand the logistics. I understand the numbers. I understand all that stuff to why it would not happen. It's Geno Stone. Geno Stone, man. Geno Stone. That's that's going to be one where I am um, be very disappointed to see him leave. I got a sad to see him. Not disappointed, but sad to see him leave. Because he just started coming into his own, man. He he, he really did. Uh Geno Stone, not the fastest at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> and we saw that multiple times on a lot of them picks. But um with Geno Stone, man, he just knew where to go, man. He knew where to be at, right place, right time. 
and he just made a lot of plays for the Baltimore Ravens. He got on that hot streak for the longest where he just kept catching pick after pick after pick after pick after pick. And that was when Marcus Williams was hurt. Um, then, of course, when Marcus Williams started coming back, they kept Marcus Williams at free safety. They moved Geno Stone to strong safety, and it was never the same after that. Um, I just feel like with Geno Stone, and I, and I said this throughout the season, I just feel like if it's not broke, then don't fix it. But, yeah, I guess they felt like they could play, they were more comfortable playing Geno Stone at strong safety than Marcus Williams. And, and I can see why. One, because of the money. Marcus Williams is making a lot of money to play free safety for the Baltimore Ravens. But then with the injury, too, with him coming back from injury, we know Marcus Williams, he wasn't fully healthy yet for the longest because he was barely tackling people. He was doing those little one-arm, two-hand touch tackles, and he just he couldn't do it yet. So if you put him in a strong safety position, it is exactly what it is. You got to be a little stronger to play that role because it's a little more physical than a free safety. Free safety, they back there roaming. They, 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 they patrolling the field. But a strong safety, they may, they're going to do some roaming too now. But they're going to be more again, on the line of scrimmage. They're going to be going against them tight ends. So if you can't be physical with them, then ooh, 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 that's, it's going to be a long day for you. So, um, but yeah, watching Geno Stone leave is, uh, it, for me, is disappointing um, because I just... I just know he could have done so well. Now, I wonder. I wonder. I don't know what the Seahawks situation is at safety. But depending on what it is, maybe Geno Stone could head on over there. Along with Patrick Queen, probably. Too. We'll, we'll see, though. Um, but, yeah, so those, those Baltimore Ravens, they are completely different team, man. Completely different team than they were uh, before. And also, in some other news, and some more coaching news, um, Josh Bynes, Josh Bynes, uh, speaking of the Seattle Seahawks, um, Josh Bynes, he interviewed to be Baltimore Ravens inside linebacker coach. Let's read the report from Aaron Wilson. He said, after interviewing for the Ravens and the Chargers for their linebacker coach position, uh, Josh Bynes accepts an assistant linebackers coach position with the Seattle Seahawks. Per league source, Bynes was coached by Mike McDonald with the Ravens and now he joins Mike McDonald with the Seahawks. So it's, 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 it's always cool to see these guys get opportunities, especially when they, um, they used to play the game. Uh, it's, it's nice to see them get coaching opportunities because they can help teach the position in a different way uh, from a different point of view than somebody who never played the game can. Because uh, you can have some good coaches that never played the game, but when it's somebody that actually was there, been there, done that, then it, to me I think it hits on a completely – different level um so again it's gonna be real interesting to see how these the seahawks are this season it's gonna be real interesting to see um just exactly how good they be how mike mcdonald runs his show over there uh, especially because he's somebody that a lot of us wanted to be running the show with the baltimore ravens um but hey let's see how john harbaugh runs his show too again we i feel like we already know like how the regular season is gonna go um but playoffs obviously big 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 question mark there but before you get there you got a lot of question marks on this team on this roster with the personnel uh with the coaching staff and hey this is the part of the season well the part of the off season where a lot of those questions they start to get answered well, so we'll see exactly how the Baltimore Ravens respond to losing a lot of guys we'll see who they end up still losing because they can still make some cuts they still got some guys who contracts could expire uh, and then we'll see how they respond by who they bring in, who they re-sign, who they possibly trade for, who they acquire to assemble this team.